Hi, I'm back for a short but and sweet, nice and sweet video. Um, this is, um, I've already made a video about that, but I think it was in, only in French and it was about a year ago, but I wanted to talk about the rings and the different types of uh, ring shanks because I feel that this is a really crucial part of the process. Before even uh, starting to make the ring, you have to design it or think about it, draw it, start to make prototypes in not non-precious metals. So um, this this is what I've learned over the years and those are examples I've picked of rings uh, I've made to show you what uh, can be done and what I feel is only my personal tastes, what works best and for what uses and what not to do. So I'm going to start with the main, the main and the most simple things, especially if you're starting up and picking up jewelry making, you will go for those types of rings which are the easiest to do and to craft which are the full kind of round wire rings. Uh, uh, that are really great and uh, just as I like that as a minimalistic kind of approach and it's a good way to practice. The thing is, uh, I would not advise you to use round wire for rings that will then have to be um, set with a cabochon because the round is just too smooth and will slide very much on fingers. On the opposite, if you take half round wires, the the outer part will be really comfortable to wear and very aesthetically pleasing, but the inside part will be flat, which means that it will stick on the on the finger better, especially if it's the proper size, like the perfect size, it will tend to move less, which is more um, which is appreciable uh, when you have uh, something on top like a cabochon or a stone or something. So those are the basics that I would use and the only way I would actually use round wire for rings is if they are to be used bare or with really simple designs, very kind of minimalistic designs, that's when I would use and that and go for that. If you want to put cabochon, like I was mentioning, I would go for a half round wire uh, and especially if you could use something with a decent thickness, about 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick, because it will last longer, it will be more, more sturdy, because you have to keep in mind that rings are usually the ones that are more um, kind of mistreated, because we move a lot, we use our fingers, people wear their rings, never take them off. For instance, this one I've never taken it off in a year. so. The this is also a good way for you to show you what a ring would look like in silver. The use and you can see that, that it's kind of starting to get all scra scratched up and everything. So if it's too tiny and too thin, it will eventually break at some point. That's why the thickness is quite important and doing properly the soldering is also crucial. Here we can see that I've chosen, uh, because the cabochon wasn't too wide, I was able to make the round um, shank and then solder it on the two sides, which makes it even more sturdy and makes it comfortable to wear. So I would really advise you to go for that if you can and if the cabochon are not too big because it will be the most um, the, the simplest way to make the rings and make them really easy to wear comfortable and durable the other option that you have is in the same line, which 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 I like is the fact of using for this ring. I've used two sheets of metals that were the 0 0.5 millimeter thick. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equals around one mil, maybe a bit less, uh, because I've hammered it. So the fact of making layers of metal will make it more sturdy, yet make it still c quite. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say feminine, but at least kind of uh, not too heavy to wear. And for those, I like to do that, this method that is merely the same thing as this one, because you use the length of the top, but on the bottom, it's way thinner. And because it's thinner, it will be easier to, um, to do this with your finger, I don't know how you say the word in English, to kind of bend your fingers. And for some people that have really small phalange, uh, kind of, you know, the, the well, really small fingers, quite frankly, um, it will be uncomfortable to have massive rings that have a massive width on the entire ring. When you make something smaller in the inside, it's easier to wear and it's more comfortable. So I like this, uh, this option too, because it's really comfortable to wear. Uh, yet while making something look massive, but not that massive when you look on the other side. The other option for uh, those uh, big massive rings that um, will have to be, uh, that will be thought and made to um, put on and 
kind of keep put the weight keep the weight of a big stone or of a big pebble like this one is the option of multiple kind of uh, ring shanks like this I did this ring a long time ago if I had if I had to redo with the knowledge I have today I wouldn't take round wires like I've just mentioned I would take half round wires and I would still put three of them because it makes it really sturdy because you don't only have it's just as if you solder like I will show you and what not to do at the end but it's better to have more points of soldering and of adherence on the metal that you're gonna solder it to than just to have one it will make it more sturdy stay more on, stabilized on the finger and it will make a better job at you will make a better job and a more durable job like that so this is why I like this option and this is also applicable for bracelets especially if you use massive stones once again it's important to have something that will be sturdy and also comfortable to wear and that will keep its position position and not move that's why I like that and because it's round I find it moves slightly too much but this is a great way to go around big big fingers with lots of cabochon or you know um, also big metal pieces on it on it um, this is another option that you can do which is good if you want to make uh, um, adjustable sizes rings. Um, for this I would go for the idea of taking a plain rectangle sheet of metal and really kind of smooth the edges and make it slightly smaller on the edges so that is the same principle as the, with this one. Uh, you can adjust the size but it's not too big and if you have small fingers it won't be uncomfortable to wear and because we have a massive amount of metal. I say massive a lot in this video. <laughs> I don't know what massive! Uh, anyway, so um, squirrel. <laughs> uh, so and the fact of having a, a big uh, base will allow you to put big cabochons with, without having this problem of the, the the ring moving around which I hate especially when you put your hands in water and then it gets slippery and it's really annoying so this is a good way to w go around this problem of having to put something perhaps that is quite heavy on top without having to compromise on the quality and the sturdiness of the bottom of the shank of the ring shank the other option is of course the chevalier so the... Um, uh, I forgot the word in English um, I don't remember. Anyway, those types of rings that are really heavy, um, usually they're casted and the good thing with that is because they're casted um, and if you, you make them quite heavy, um, they they tend to last a long time to be very sturdy and if the size is right they will not move and they will really stay in place and it doesn't, you don't have to really mind about the thickness and the amount of weight on the top because the bottom will be able to handle it because everything is in one, is in one piece there's no soldering involved it's all in one piece so this is a great way to really make bigger rings with coins or anything you want and for this one I've used bronze and because I didn't want the bronze to be on the skin and to turn all greenish inside I've added a layer of fine silver to be sure that it was not gonna move and not gonna be kind of on my fingers and this is a great way also by the way if you want to use non-precious metals that look golden uh, but without having the, the problems of it which is that it turns green or it turns black or really kind of doesn't look good so um, this is a great way to, to to go around that one too and the last one last but not least is what I advise you not to do uh, so massive uh, massive cabochon um, and again massive why am I stuck with this word in my head I don't know uh, but so as you can see I was mentioning earlier the idea that it's better to have more soldering points than just one one and this is exactly why I would not recommend you to do this because I've made uh, a simple ring band uh, with a half round wire and boop, I've stuck it soldered it right there the problem with this is that it will move hopefully it doesn't move too much because it's so big that it's stuck between my two fingers but if it's a smaller cabochon you will have the danger of it moving around swirling around and the fact that it's not really as sturdy if you only have one point of soldering rather than two on both sides which will make it better stand better on the finger and last longer and be more sturdy so that's why I do not recommend this if I had to redo it I would have cut through in the middle and soldered the two sides um, like equally with the equal amount of solder to be sure that it would not move 
So this is it for the ring shanks and their uses. This is, rem I remind you, like, this is only my opinion. Um, just take what you want from this video. That was the stuff that I found useful and uh, that I now apply in the way I conceive my rings. I hope this was out of service and I'll see you around for another video. Bye-bye.